if we can touch on this a uh, Wilder Fury uh, uh rematch, man, I, what would what, you think about how that all played out, man? It's, if you if you can, well, I think right from the get go, you know, when they were showing Deontay in, in the dressing room, I, I just felt he was worried about something. You know, all the pacing he was doing, walking back and forth, back and forth. You know, I mean, I I didn't know what was up with that. I've never seen him like that before. So I knew something was on his mind, just didn't know what. But, and it really showed when he got in there in the, in the first round. You know, Fury had a game plan and Wilder just didn't look like he had a game plan. If he did, he didn't follow it because, you know, Fury just jumped right on top of him. And maybe they didn't expect for Fury to jump on top. I mean, I don't know. But Fury used his weight against him. You know, he was leaning on him and, you know, the thing about it is Wilder didn't know what to do when he started leaning on him. You know, he didn't know how to get underneath and make Fury get off balance and stuff like that. That's just something he didn't work on, and that really hurt him bad. And then, you know, he had, he had no legs, I mean, right from the beginning. And you can't blame him on the suit. You know, that's the worst thing in the world is to start making excuses when you're fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. You know, don't make excuses. Give Fury his props. Fury was ready. He had a great game plan. And he used it against him, and it worked. And Wilder just lost. And people are blaming Mark Breland for doing something. Hmm. <laughs> that a trainer, that's his job. His job is to train him, but to look after him also, you know, to save him from himself. And that's what Mark Breland did. He saved them from himself. And, but to tell you the truth, if, if I was in a corner, mm -hmm. I would have to fight two rounds earlier. Oh, see, I was gonna ask you that. You got right to the, my question. So you would, so what did you see that like, you saw? He, he was, he just wasn't there at that point. Or you just. At... Well, you know, his right hand wasn't there. You know, you know, sometimes when a guy depends on, of when a fighter depends too much on one punch, you know, it can really work against you. And it, it did, it worked against him because he couldn't land it, you know? His jab wasn't there, he had nothing. Mm. So when you, when you get in and you have a guy who's getting hit and getting dropped, getting hurt with everything he's getting hit with, you know, as a trainer, you know, you, you have to not only have sympathy for your fighter, but you have to protect him. That's your job, is to protect your fighter. And that's exactly what Mark Breland did. And he got a lot of flack. Not from the fans, but from his own corner. Hmm. You know, which was ridiculous to me. Hmm. You know, I mean, I, you know, I didn't understand that. And I still to this day don't understand it. You know, I, I talk to Mark all the time. Mark is one of my best friends. And we talk all the time. And, you know, he just couldn't believe that they was acting the way they was acting toward him. You know, and after the fight, he said he went back, got his bag and left, you know, because everybody was mad at him for doing something that he was supposed to do. Yes. If Deontay would have got killed in that ring, you know, they would ask, why didn't you stop it? <laughs> you know, so it's a no -win it was a no-win situation for Mark. And I feel sorry that he had to go through that. He didn't deserve to go through that. And... You know, it was just too much flack that he was catching for something that he was supposed to do. That's his job. That's what you pay him for. You pay him not only to train you, but to protect you in that ring.